Into Wonderland, Alice followed the white rabbit into a hole that dropped her into a strange world. Writing is like that. A hole into a strange wonderland. A project is an intriguing white rabbit luring us to follow even as it, even as it reminds us that the project has to meet a deadline or be late for that important date. At any time of year, but especially in spring with the flowers and grass coming out, or of autumn with the glorious blaze of the changing leaves, my thoughts always turn to projects for the next season. Even even with projects laid out for an entire year, blazing ideas for the new crowd in, trying to push out the ones that I need to finish. Before I became disciplined with those projects, a lesson it took over a year to learn, I know, I'm slow. I would have allowed myself to nibble that sweet biscuit of a novel or drink that tea of a non-fiction book before I ever, ever tried to finish a project. I've learned not to graze into upcoming projects unless a sure and specific benefit is offered. I'll take notes about the project, but I won't launch into it. Wonderland operates by its own skewed rules. It's the same kind of wonderland. Unlike the humdrum work world, we can pick the biscuit we want to eat and keep nibbling until the project fills up the house. We can add in our wondrous encounters with a sly Cheshire cat and a strange caterpillar and Tweedledee and Tweedledum before taking tea with the Mad Hatter and the Dormouse, the rules by which our skewed wonderland operates. There's only three rules. What are they? This episode can help. Welcome to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, headed up by M.A. Lee, with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Runes, all from Writers, Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, process, process, craft, and tools. Show notes for this and other episodes can be found on the rightfocus.blogspot.com, write to us at winkbooks at aol.com. Our podcast episodes last as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute or take a brisk walk. We're bookcasting and find episode today. The opening into Wonderland comes from M.A. Lee's Just Start Writing. Then we segue over to the introduction of Write a Book in a Month from Remy Black. Write a Book in a Month will be our focus throughout April. Every day we'll be podcasting. As for today, as for today, let's start off with the rules for Into Wonderland. Rule number one for writers, for anyone pursuing a dream that haunts them, never stop. Never stop that pursuit. Never stop writing. Get to the end and continue. Don't leave the Wonderland. Once we visit the Red Queen, we have more places to explore. If you are pursuing traditional publishing, write the second and third and fourth books while the first one is submitted to editors and agents. If you are an indie writer, having come to the indie world after giving up on the traditional publishers or bypassing them entirely, the greatest reward is having others read your writing, having others read your writing and praise it. Rule number two, treat your work professionally, whether writing or pursuing any other dream. If it's the dream you want, pursue it like a job. Present the best type script possible for your readers and hire professionals to polish the manuscript before you publish it. People who are con- and proofreaders enable your words to look as professional as you need them to be, except that nothing wonderful ever came easily. You may hear of other writers who game the system. Avoid that. You will be happy if you keep your work honorable. That flamingo may fly off with someone else's croquet ball, but not yours. You not yours. You demand that your flamingo play the croquet game correctly. Many shysters have attached themselves to the world of writing, disguising themselves as vanity publishers or developmental editors or marketing gurus. They want to separate you from your money. Don't let them. The writing community can be a warm place like a teapot with a splash of gin for a nice hot toddy. Even in safe havens, however, evil lurks. Don't be lured in. Don't be a curmudgeon. Use circumspection and wise business practices in dealing with others. And remember, a contract is a contract. Rule number three, humans are visual, visual, and the first attractors to books are the covers. Cover designers are more essential than editors. Some people will drop 4,000 or more on a developmental editor, then create their own cover or buy a generic one for 50 bucks. What's the old saying? A man who is his own lawyer has a fool for a client. Well, 
for cover designers as well. Covers should entice your readers into the wonderland of your work. This is one expense you cannot skimp. Take the time to search the internet and find a designer whose aesthetic fits the tone of the book that you want. After an 18-month search, the designers I found are professional and creative and adding details that I would never think of. An excellent cover designer can take a few glimmering words of direction. This is the far book and create an enchanting cover that captures the novel, whether in an abstract way or more realistically. Cover designs should make your manuscript feel special. When we do service from one when we do service from Wonderland, our minds are a little confused by tea parties and our hearts assaulted by the heart card soldiers. We want to curl up beneath a kindly tree. We can't though. The real world calls to us. Family and friends bolster and encourage and diss our stories in positive ways. Mine love me and ground me my dreams soaring. They critique rather than criticize and praise when praise is deserved. And they let me have the time I need for writing and pursuing my dream. However, writing is a solitary business. Writers spend their free time in their brains working out characters and plots and considering themes and motifs. And motifs. The best support system for writers are friends who give strong critiques, who spot problems, and who give their honest opinions of the story. Life can throw us unexpected roadblocks, high walls that block our view of the future, and twisting passages that can steal our hearts. On our Wonderland journey, we can encounter darkness and monsters. Family and friends keep us progressing. With their love and support, we can achieve our dreams. My most recent unbelievable dream happened last spring. As the world locked down for a plague year, the whole year became a wild ride. Anyway, my little brain decided I could best promote myself with a podcast. Yeah, podcast. yeah, that was an unbelievable dream. I hate talking. In 30 years of teaching, I hated every hour that I had to talk. I had to lecture, engage with students, reteach, bolster and support, review, change from lecture to Socratic discussions, and listen to students. As someone who hates talking, maybe teaching their choice. And I stumbled a lot in my first years. And here again, with the idea of a podcast, my brain was saying, try talking, yuck. But by midsummer last year, I had research done, research about podcast, research about podcast host, research about podcast recording and mix recording and mixing and exporting and importing. By August, I was practicing with audio files for an upcoming book release. And then October 6th, I launched the podcast. Here I am today. I recently celebrated my 25th episode, which some podcast never achieve apparently persistent dreams do open opportunities accepting challenges causes growth a couple of years ago back in 2019 i decided to pursue another dream i gave myself a dare i wanted to write a novella about 30,000 words i had nothing planned i had no characters i had no plot i had no scenes i knew the scenes i knew the world and i knew what i wanted to do with the novella it was going to serve as a reader magnet so i decided april i'll do it and i will log my successes and failures as an open blog for other writers the result became write a book in a month before that april started i didn't have a steady words in a month in 2018 i needed eight plus month to write 96,000 words that works out to about 12,000 words a month it's actually 24,000 words on average that come through my fingers per month because I do a complete handwritten rough and a complete type draft as separate document draft as separate documents. Handwriting the rough gives me permission.